Welcome back to the Ultimate Mixdown, everyone. If you've been exploring the wonderful world of Reaper for some time, then you probably learned by now that there's no shortage of tools and functionality for any and all of your audio processing needs. Maybe you're a seasoned user and you familiarize yourself with all the amazing features that come right out of the box, or maybe you're still just scratching the surface, exploring the different menus, windows, plugins, and customizations. Regardless, since you clicked on this video, I think now is the best time to tell you that there is a whole world of third-party developers that have created effects, scripts, and other extensions to enhance your Reaper experience and further streamline your Reaper workflows. Now, before I get into the first one, I just want to mention that as of the release of this video, I'm offering a free discovery sessions for dedicated songwriters, musicians, engineers like yourself who may be interested in UMD coaching for a more personalized experience and more direct mentoring with yours truly. See the link in the description below. All right, so let's get started with the first one. The first one is SWS SNM extension. No, not that SNM. The name stands for Standing Water Studios, Simple and Mighty. Okay, now this one we're going to start with because it's a plugin extension of its own and it's a beast in and of itself. And in many cases, this extension is required to use some of the repack scripts and effects that come with the other extension. Okay, now this SWS extension is dedicated third-party developers that created a multitude of extendable functionality in Reaper. So you get more tools, more customization, and many, many, many more functions. And I'll show you that soon. If you want to read about it, you can scroll down to the about section and let me talk to some of the features. So I myself have only started using some of these features, particularly the actions, but there's other features like snapshots where you can take snapshots of different track parameters that you've changed over time so that you can go back and forth and compare without having to pull up, say a backup from a previous version of the session. This is very useful for AB for those types of things. There's the groove tool. So this is where it could take any kind of item, learn the groove of it and apply it uh, in a quantization kind of way for audio and MIDI. And Pro Tools has similar tools like this, but it's just amazing that this comes free as part of this extension. And then there's all these other types of things as well. Now, one thing that I really like to use is the auto track coloring options that come with SWS extensions. I think that's one of the best ways to stay organized, to color your tracks, color code your tracks, and you can even color code your markers, your regions, and all of that stuff. And I'll show you in just a minute what that looks like as well. All right, enough talk. Let's get to installing this thing. So it's very simple. You go to the download section at the top and you select the correct download for your operating system. And then just make sure that you're on Reaper version 5.982 or above as of the recording of this video. and then go into your downloads folder, double click on the installer. Now once the installer opens, it's very simple on a Mac and on a PC, but on a Mac, you take this dylib file, this .dylib for the SWS and you click and drag it to your user plugins folder. Now this is the user plugins that's in your Reaper path. If, if you don't know where that's located or for some reason this link is broken, I'll show you how to find the Reaper path in a minute. Now there's also this Python file and that's if you're dealing with Python function wrappers. We're not gonna deal with that. That's beyond the scope of this video, but just know that that's there. And then if you wanna use Groove templates for that Groove tool, then you can install this in any location that you wish. Okay, but we're just gonna focus on that first file. Now the Windows installer will install a DLL file and put that into the user plugins folder on a PC. Now, once you have it installed, that's basically it. You can go right into Reaper and start using this thing. So open a new session of Reaper or an existing session, and then click on extensions. And if you see about SWS extension, that means it installed correctly. And down below you even have SWS options like that auto track coloring, marker coloring, region coloring, and so forth, like I mentioned earlier. Now, if you don't see this and you wanna see your Reaper resource path, go to options, show Reaper resource path in Explorer slash finder, and it pulls up the resource path. Now, if you scroll down in the resource path to user plugins, this is where you should see that SWS dialib file or DLL for PC. Now, coming back to the extensions. So the auto track coloring is really cool. Let me just give an example of that so you can just see what one of the tools that comes with this extension has to offer. So I've set my track colors in a certain way so that vocals or vox gets one color, guitars gets another color, pianos, and so forth. So let me just show you what that looks like. And then what really makes it useful is when you record a section, 
those colors carry on into the regions, into the arrange view. So if I'm working with tens to hundreds of tracks, I can just see at any given point what types of tracks they are. If you want more information about the auto track coloring, I actually have a separate video. I'll give a link in the description. Okay, but the other thing I want to talk about that I use all the time are the actions, right? The scripts that come with the SWS extensions. So to get to the actions list, you hold shift and press slash or question mark on your keyboard. And then if you type in SWS in the filter, you see all of the actions that come with this one extension. So just keep scrolling because there are thousands. Okay, so the capabilities alone, just with this one extension, are seemingly endless. Now, one that I like to use a lot is this split action. So let me just give you an example. You could run it right from here, but as with all good actions that you use regularly, you should set a keyboard shortcut to that action. I have a video for that as well. I'll place in the description. So it's split items at the time selection if exists, else at edit cursor. So this helps speed up my workflow because when I want to split, I want to split fast. So I'm going to select any area and click the S key and it will split anywhere that I select. Now that in and of itself isn't super special, but if I want to select a region and split or just an individual spot and split, I can also do that. That is very powerful for editing. But again, we're just scratching the surface. So with thousands of scripts, actions, options, etc., you'll feel like a kid in a candy store. But I'm not just leaving you with that. We're going to go full overload on these extensions and we're going to start talking about the next one, which is Repack. This is a package management tool that allows you to import and install third-party extensions, scripts, effects, and other things like themes and language packs for more customization. I can't even begin to tell you how amazing it is that so many people from the Reaper community work on projects that you can import and use in your Reaper projects for free. Not only are they free, but they're open source. So if you want to geek out like me and spend some time learning some of the languages that you can use, you can modify the scripts that you get from other developers to fine tune it in ways that help you even further. Okay, but to use this, you don't need to know any programming. All you need to know is what I'm going to show you on how to install it and how to install packages on your machine for your Reaper instance, I should say. I'll put a link in the description below. This is repack.com. So getting right into it, to download it, look for the one for your Reaper version. Make sure that you're also looking at your own operating system. Click the installer. Consider making a donation because this takes a lot of effort to put together and to maintain. Okay, but if you just want to go right to the installer, you can click not at this time. Click save. All right, and then you get another one of these dialib files, right? On a Mac, this is dynamic library. On a PC, it's a DLL file, which is a dynamically linked library file. And these are just the library files that you're going to put into your user plugins folder so that Reaper can see that it's there, right? And all the resources that are within it. Okay, so we're going to go back to Reaper and we're going to go to options show Reaper resource path in Explorer Finder again, and we're going to find that user plugins folder, whether you're working on a Windows or a Mac, right? Go to the user plugins folder, then go to your downloads, and just click and drag that file into the user plugins folder. If you don't see the extension, then you might need to restart your Reaper, All right? That's how easy it is to install this. The first time you open Reaper, you might be greeted with a prompt to manage your repack repositories. And this is just another way of saying the place where you're going to import and install the scripts from. If you didn't get prompted with that, or you need to go back into it, it's under Repack, Manage Repositories. This is going to look a little different from you because I've imported other repositories, but essentially the ones that are checked are the ones that when you go to browse the packages, you'll see packages tied to these repositories. And you do need to be online for this. Uh, there's ways to be offline and use the scripts, but in order to access the repositories, you should be connected to an internet source. And then whatever ones you checked, Package Manager will essentially be able to see the scripts from those repositories. Again, those repositories are just locations, right? Websites that have the scripts readily available for you to come and install them in your Reaper. Okay, and I'll show you how to import a repository in a little bit. But let's take a look at what we have initially. Synchronize packages. It's good to click this regularly to just make sure that you're pulling the latest information on packages and synchronizing it with your Reaper. Okay, but then we have browse packages. So if you click browse packages, these are all the packages that are associated with those repositories. And you can sort by the ones that are installed, uninstalled, uh, and then there's ones that are out of date and obsolete as well. And you could remove those 
Now this is where you install the packages for the specific scripts or effects that you want to use in your Reaper. So one awesome effect plugin that I suggest you take a look at is the re-EQ, right? But this is a parametric equalizer, very similar to the out-of-the-box re-EQ, but this has a very nice graphical user interface. So to install a package, you click Actions, and then you go to Install. I have Uninstall here because I already have it installed. But you click Install, and then you click Apply. Once it's installed, you'll see this I here. That means that the package has been installed. In some cases, you need to restart Reaper to be able to use the effect or to be able to use the script that you installed. Then I can go to one of these tracks, and for effects, I can search that effect and then load it up on the track. So this is the re-EQ, all right? And then you can start putting in points and dragging it all around. It's essentially using a very similar EQ style to the re-EQ. It's just a lot prettier, all right? A lot more fun to use too. Now, when it comes to scripts, you're not gonna load this up on the effects racks. You're gonna load those up by using the actions, right? So anytime I say scripts, anytime I'm talking importing scripts or installing packages for scripts, I'm talking about actions. Again, that's shift slash or the question mark on your keyboard. Now to install something that has a script, your repack package manager already has a bunch of these scripts that you can install it's just straight from the repositories that were automatically installed when you installed repack. But you can also add more to this, like additional packages by importing additional repositories. So let me show you that because I was looking for uh, a step sequencer, something that's similar to FL Studio, right? When you go in and you can just select on the beat which drums hit where very intuitively and with a decent graphic user interface. And I found this mix sequencer in the Kakos forums. So anytime you're gonna install a repository, right? You copy the link and you go to the imports in Reaper for the repositories. Now you can't just copy a link as you see it if you see this dot, 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 right? This is not the full link. Okay, so if you need to see the full link, you can command or control click on this and it'll open in a new tab as the full link and then command or control C to copy it. Now to import it, very simple. Go to extensions, repack, import repositories, paste the link, and click okay. Now if you go to repack, manage repositories, you should see that repository and here it is. Once you import the repository, you can now see all the packages that contain all the scripts from that repository. So now we'll go to Browse Packages, and we'll look up Mix Sequencer. And here's the packages. This is for the sequencer, and then this is for exporting selected items to the Rhea Samplematic 5000 instances. Okay, so this is a specific effect tied to this sequencer. So to install, again, go to Actions, Install. All right, now I'll install both of these. Click apply, and then when it's done, it gives you a little log file, a little transaction report. Click OK to close out. Now again, you can't insert this on the effects because it's not an effect, it's a script. So we'll go to shift slash, and we'll run the action. So mic sequencer, okay? And if I double click or I click run, it pulls up the sequencer. You can start adding on additional drums and different types of sequencing and really build this pattern out. That's just one example of importing a repository browsing for the package and installing the package and then running the script. Now, in some cases, when you go to run a script, it might give you a warning. It might tell you that some dependency needs to be installed and that's very simple to resolve. Again, you just go to browse packages. You can just search for the package. So for this mix sequencer, I actually ran into needing real MGUI API installed. And then I also needed the JS Rhea script API installed. And this is a big one for a lot of these repack scripts. So go ahead and install these packages the same way. And then once you do that and you go back into your actions list and try to run that script again, you should be able to run it no problem. As if the functionality and the capabilities of Reaper weren't vast enough, now you have third-party developers all over the place. You can go to those Kakos forums and see all the different types of tools and scripts and things like that that people are creating and then making readily available for free for you to just pull into your Reaper sessions and start using. Now, if you found this video useful and you want to fast track your music production learning, especially with Reaper, definitely click on the link below to sign up for that free discovery session. And as always, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.